Hello, and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick, we're playing Station Ears. Now, I did get a comment on one of my videos there about using uh, charcoal for, uh, for fuel. Now, I must admit, when I first put that came into the game, I thought that is uh, pretty stupid. Why would you do that? You get much more power out of coal. Well, I did have a go at it. Wow, boy, have I got to eat those words there. Using using biofuel is very, oh, dare I say it, overpowered. Um, but let's give it a go and we'll have a look and see what it does. So what are we going to need for all of this? Well, you will need a recycler, a centrifuge, an arc furnace or a furnace, and your solid generator and somewhere to store your battery, your power, of course. Got a battery and some food. So I have a potato. Now stand witness to the power of potatoes. Now what biofuel is is if you put food into your recycler, you'll get out a reagent, which is a bio reagent. We get a fair bit of it, which then conveniently jumps into your recycler for you. It will output a biomass which looks like a pile of rabbit turds. That is the output of pretty much any, any, any sort of uh, vegetation you put in there. If we then bake that in the furnace, now your furnace does draw a lot of power when you do this. So you've generally got a heavy cable it all through, but it produces charcoal now the charcoal then just goes into your furnace, into your generator, and you get power. So that 10 charcoal came from one potato. And it runs for quite a while. Now this does become a, uh, a self-powering process because it will produce enough power from one potato to grow more than one potato. So this becomes a very renewable power source. So now that we've got that done, I don't need the battery there to kickstart it. We can just run the whole thing off the power we've got from one potato. Now I'll rewire the power on that one because it just does draw a lot of power when you do that. It produces it very quickly, of course, but chews up a lot of power. So let's do a bit of repair on that one. So you don't go in that way. You can go in that way. And if I grab some heavy cables, I shall connect them around the other side. And we are eventually, there we go, got it. Now, we're good to go. So the APC is turned off. The only power we've got is the furnace. Potato again. Split one. Once again, the power of a single potato. In you go from there. I switched it all off. From there. In we go. Into there. Out comes our biomass. You up. We're good now. And into the furnace, uh, the generator. See how much power it took out of the battery when we put it in the, in the arc furnace. And we're going again. We're all good. Now, of course, you can automate the arc furnace and just join them all up with chutes. As such, now to automate your arc furnace, we need a slot reader, so we can read in from the arc furnace, slot, import, we read occupied, there it is. So from the arc furnace, import slot, occupied, that'll tell us if there's anything in it or not. And from there, we read from that, we send out to the arc furnace, activate. We're on, good. So that should be the whole lot from start to finish. 
So if I now potato myself up again, one, one potato, because more than one potato is too much power. Here we go from the recycler. There we go. Into there, we're away, and we're done. That's it. That's all the automation you need. Ah, well, you can automate your, your plant growing, of course, but we've done that before in other tutorials. Just have a look at them to see what you like. Now, you can just put at the start, you can put a splitter in the start, so everything that comes out of your greenhouse, you can split off so that half of it will go into the generator and the other half will be ready for replanting or eating. And, uh, you're good to go. So, in terms of a sustainability type of thing, and here we are on Venus, of course. This is a fully self sufficient biofueled base. I have the Harveys, six of them there. They're just growing rice, planting it. From there, it drops into a conveyor as they harvest it. Around the back through a splitter, splits off half of it to keep for future planting or eating. The rest of it goes through the recycler, into the centrifuge, into the arc furnace, and then of course into the solid fuel generator. Now, the only piece of automation I have in that is the trigger for the uh, arc furnace. That is just the two logic chips, a slot reader and a writer, that's it. That's all of the automation I've got for that system there. Of course, I've got the chips for running my Harveys to make sure they all just continually plant their thing. They've currently got a stockpile of rice each. As they harvest it, that is generating enough power to run my coolers, my battery chargers, my environmental controls, my airlocks. Uh, it's got an oxygen filter over the side there, which will return the oxygen back into the room. So at the moment, Oh, I've got a whole 2% of oxygen here, but the oxygen comes from the plants, the power comes from the plants, it's enough to run the grow lights and everything, so all I need to do is add a bit more, a bit more water to it every now and then, and the base is fully self-sufficient. It will produce surplus oxygen, surplus power, and surplus food. So, if I just need a bit of water, that's good. That's just this one room. That's the entire power station, the entire self, fully self-contained base. Cool. I think I might be a little bit overpowered. Just a tad. Race power. A base powered by hippies. <laughs> so there you go, a biofuel. Seriously overpowered, but it works at the moment and Hey, can't argue with that. Um, that's a bit of a quickie today, but that was just too cool. I had to show it. So that's about all for today, though. So until next time, happy building. See ya. Yeah, they're, they're medicinal. They're for personal use, really. <laughs>